This topic is week 11. Topic is about magnetic induction and inductance. I am your OLC. I am Luni Labilastimosa from AMA Davao. So our learning objectives are at the end of this presentation, the students will be able to A, explain Faraday's law of electromagnetic induction, calculate induced electromotive force and current. To start with, I would like to ask one question. Again, our topic is magnetic induction and inductance. Uh, in the previous lesson about magnetism, about magnetism, we, we have or you have learned that the current can produce a magnetic field. No? So in a specific situation where there is a current carrying conductor, a straight conductor, a conductor, uh, a coiled conductor. No? So again, an electric current can produce magnetic field based on our previous topic. Now, question, is the reverse of it possible? So if electric current can produce magnetic field, is magnetic field can produce electric current? So the answer to that is yes, it is possible. So in this presentation, you, you will be able to learn that magnetic field can produce an electric current. So let us define electromagnetism. Electricity and magnetism are closely related. This involves the attraction and repulsion between charged particles and the forces exerted by these charges. So these phenomena were first connected by Oersted. As we have discussed last time, you know, in Oersted experiment of current and compass, so that was in 1820. So he discovered that an electric current in a wire can exert a force on a compass needle, indicating that an electric field can lead to a force on a magnet. So an electric field can produce a magnetic field on the time of uh, or stead. So the interaction between magnetism and electricity is called electromagnetism. So the movement of a magnet can generate electricity. So the flow of electricity can generate a magnetic field. That's it. So electromagnetic or electromagnetic induction or magnetic induction is the production of an electromotive force across an electrical conductor in changing magnetic field. And Michael Faraday is generally credited with the discovery of the induction in 1831. It was uh, 11 years after Oersted's uh, discovery of electric current to magnetic field. And James Clerk Maxwell mathematically described it as Faraday's law of induction. So again, electromagnetic induction or magnetic induction. So production of EMF across an electrical conductor of changing magnetic field. So who is Michael Faraday? So Michael Faraday is one of the greatest scientists in the 19th century. He was a chemist, and physicist, and his major contribution is the electromagnetic induction and law of electrolysis, chemistry and physics. Now, in 1820, I saw. In 1820, Danish physicist Hans Christian Oersted 
discovered that an electric current in a wire can exert a force on a compass needle. In last meeting's discussion ito. And an electric current is produced by an electric field. Electric current, electric field, and compass needle is a smaller bar magnet. So Orsted discovery also showed that an electric field lead to a force on a magnet. So he therefore concluded that electric field can produce magnetic field. Now at time of Michael Faraday, he reasoned that if an electric field can produce a magnetic field in the time of uh, as discovered by Christian Ersted in 1820, perhaps a magnetic field can produce an electric field. Michael Faraday attempted to observe such an induced electric current or electric field using an experiment like the one sketched in the figure. So in the figure, in figure A, there was no current in light bulb if uh, the magnet is stationary. If we have a bulb that was connecting wire, and then kung merong magnet, no? Placing the magnet in stationary uh, position, there is no current in the light bulb. So far, they was probably very disappointed that this experiment was not successful. No current was detected in the wire loop where the bar magnet was at rest near the loop. He did, however, discover that when a bar magnet is in motion, either toward or away from the loop, the bulb does emit light. So as you can see, we have a compass IA uh, bar magnet with an arrow, no meaning uh, moving this magnet in and out of the loop, of the current loop. So again, the bulb does em emit light. So as you can see, uh, this shows that my ilaw yung bulb compares the first figure. So again, indicating an electric field within the wire. So this electric field is produced only when the magnet is moving. Meron lang la mag magkailaw lang ito if the magnet moves in and out from the current loop. So this electric field is produced only when the magnet is moving. So remember that. So if the magnet is, is stationary at rest, again, the current and hence also the electric field are always zero. So kung walang, walang movement ang magnet, electric field is zero. Therefore, current is zero. Okay, so that's it. For the uh, Orsted and Faraday's discovery. So another experiment Faraday did to demonstrate magnetic induction was to move a bar magnet through a wire coil and measure the resulting electric current through the wire. Okay, so we have when uh, the bar magnet again is moved up, back up, there is deflection in the ammeter. So remember that ammeter is an instrument used to measure electric current. So there is deflection. Actually, kung walang, walang electric current na detect ang instrument na ammeter, yung uh, needle, yung pointer, nasa gitna. No? So since push itong uh, magnet upward, the needle deflects to the right. So, remember na meron itong magnetic field and this is our coil, the wire connected to the ammeter. So, instead of bulb, 
para ma-indicate kung ano ang magnitude ng electric current uh, for the use at ammeter. No? Now, after that, so moving up, then in moving down, moving down, yung middle and ng point or ang pointer ng ammeter moves to the left. And then binaliktad. South, pa upward. Nag deflect to the left yung pointer ng ammeter. Then pa downward. Deflected to the right. And if stationary, nasa center. Meaning zero ang electric current. So, the movement of a magnet relative to a coil produces electric current as shown in this figure. So, the same current are produced if the coil is moved relative to the magnet. The greater the speed, the greater the speed, the greater the magnitude of the current. And the current is zero when there is motion. The current produced by moving the magnet upward is in the opposite direction as the current produced in moving the magnet downward. So, yan ang another experiment of Faraday. So, Faraday devised another approach to this experiment in which solenoid is positioned near a loop of a wire containing the light bulb. So what is this solenoid? Now we learned last time that if we have a circular loop, there is a magnetic field if uh, there is electric current. So a solenoid is a helical winding of wires on a cylindrical form, circular in cross-section. So, again, for they devise another approach to this experiment in which solenoid is positioned near a loop of wire containing a light bulb. Ito yung solenoid. So, naka, um, this is a helical winding of wire. Ito, so, so, ito, ito, ito. Okay, so containing a light bulb. Now recall that when an electric current passes through a solenoid, a magnetic field is produced with field lines similar to those produced by a bar magnet. And he wanted to know if the magnetic field could also produce a current in this loop. So, uh, passing an electric current I through the solenoid by connecting it to a battery. So this is the solenoid connected to a battery. No? Found, he found out that when the current through the solenoid is constant, is constant, meaning pag meron switch ang, ang circuit on, no? walang changes, constant ang I there is no current. So as you can see, walang ilaw itong bulb na to. So that indicates no electric current, even though we have a source here. So light bulb is dark. The bulb did not light. But the bulb does light the moment the switch is open and closed. As you can see, we have there is an arrow to indicate na in the off, on, off, on, off, on. So, yung circuit, yung flow of I is not constant. No? So, in doing that, for a day, uh, learn that an electric current is produced during the, this instance in which your current through the solenoid is changing from zero to some non-zero value. 
that is when a switch was closed or from a non-zero value as the switch was open. So there is light in the bulb where light bulb is lit just after switch is open or closed. So for this experiment with a bar magnet and the solenoid show that changing magnetic field produce an electric field and an electric field produced in this way is called induced electric field. And this phenomenon is called magnetic induction. Induction meaning to, to produce. No? So Faraday's experiments demonstrated quantita qualitatively the effect of magnetic induction. Faraday also formulated Faraday's law which tells how to calculate the induced electric field in different situations. To use this law, we must first recall a quantity called magnetic flux. So we discussed magnetic flux in our previous lesson. And let's recall that magnetic flux denoted by phi subscript B or magnetic flux is given by the, by the equation that magnetic flux is equal to area times or A times B, where A is the surface area and B is the magnetic field. So the unit of, of magnetic flux is Weber. Its equivalent unit is one, one Weber is one Tesla times square meter. Okay. So Faraday's induction experiments demonstrate that a changing field produces current in the wire. Faraday's law tells us how to calculate potential difference that produces this induced current. This law is written in terms of magnetic flux and electromotive force. So take note that electromotive force is not a force, rather it is a potential difference like the one that appears across the terminal of a battery. So Faraday, Faraday's law states that a change in magnetic flux produces an electric potential difference. Epsilon given by the formula. So again, epsilon or electromotive force is negative change in magnetic flux over change in time. Or delta phi over delta t. This simple formula contains two important ideas. First, that the magnitude of the induced EMF equals the rate of change of magnetic flux, this part. And the second important idea is the negative sign. Ito. So the negative sign, which is so important that it has its own name, the Lenz law. So it states that an induced current is always in such a direction that its own magnetic field acts to oppose the effect brought it about. Okay, so the figure shows a coil of n turns. Faraday's law can be rewritten as. So itong number of turns is how many loops, no? How many loops or how many turns? So for a single, for a single loop, we can use delta V over delta T negative as our EMF, induced EMF. But then pag maraming coils, then I multiply natin itong quantity delta phi over delta t by number of turns or by capital N. So number of turns is no unit. Phi is change in magnetic flux, meaning phi one minus phi two minus phi one, t two minus t one for time. The unit of um, the unit of flux is Weber. Unit of time is second, so that the unit of induced voltage is volts. Okay. 
So what are the factors that influence the voltage production? So the following are the number of coins. So the induced voltage is directly proportional to the number of turns. As you can see in the, in the equation no, that uh, EMF is directly proportional to N, direct, directly proportional to magnetic flux and inversely proportional to time, change in time. So again, the greater the number of turns, the greater is voltage produced. Two, changing magnetic field. So changing magnetic field affects the induced voltage. This can be done by either moving the magnetic field around the conductor or moving the conductor in the magnetic field. Again, this can be done by either moving the magnetic field around the conductor or moving the conductor in the magnetic field. So the application of electromagnetic induction, so based on Faraday's experiment, is law accordingly to which the amount of voltage induced in a coil is proportional to the number of turns in the coil and the rate of change in magnetic field. So the AC generator works in the principle of electromagnetic induction. The working of electrical transformers are based on electromagnetic induction. The magnetic flow meter is based on electromagnetic induction. So these are a few of the applications of electromagnetic induction. So the significance of this discovery is a way of producing electrical energy in a circuit by using magnetic field and not just batteries. So everyday machines like motors, generators, and transformers work on the principle of electromagnetic induction. Okay, so according to Faraday's law, the EMF induced along a closed path such as a wire, a wire loop, depends on changes in the magnetic flux through the area enclosed by the path. So this fact leads to the number of important consequences. First, only changes in flux matter. So the magnetic flux might be large, be very large, but if it changes only a small amount, the induced EMF will still be small. Second, the rapid changes in magnetic flux produce larger values of E, or electromotive force, than do slow changes. So this depends on the rate at which the flux changes, meaning that the induced EMF plays a key role in alternating current circuits. And third, the, magnetic of, the magnitude of epsilon, or EMF, is proportional to the rate of change of flux. If this rate of change is constant, then E is constant. However, achieving the constant rate of change of delta V over delta T requires delta requires magnetic flux no? must eventually become very large, which is usually not possible in practice. And the fourth, the induced EMF is present even if there is no current in the path in closing an area of changing flux. Okay. So what is induction, by the way? The word induction is the magnetic field which is proportional to the rate of change of magnetic field. This definition of induction holds for a conductor. Induction is also known as inductance. L is used to represent the inductance and Henry is the unit of inductance. So 100 is defined as the amount of inductance required to produce an EMF of one volt in the conductor when the current change in the conductor is at the rate of one ampere per second. Induction is an act of inducting, while inductance is the property of an electric circuit by which a voltage is induced in it by changing magnetic field. Now, this electromagnetic induction law is given by Faraday's law. Again, Faraday's law.
Okay, so the following are the factors that affect inductance, the number of turns of the wire used in the inductor, the material used in the core, and the shape of the core. So, ibig sabihin may impact kung ang core circular compared to rectangular. Huh? So, inductance can be defined as the electromotive force generated to oppose the change in current at a particular time duration. So, according to Faraday's law, electromotive force is equal to negative L delta I over delta T, where L is the inductance, I electrocurrent, T is time. The unit of inductance is volt second over ampere because this is volt I is uh, ampere. No? So this is equivalent to Henry. So let us continue. There are two types of inductance, the self-induction. If changing current flowing a coil produces EMF in the same coil. When there is a change in the current or magnetic flux of the coil, an opposed induced electromotive force is produced. The second is mutual induction. So that changing current through the coil, changing current through one coil produces EMF in another coil. Okay, so ano ang kaibahan ng self-induction from mutual induction? Sa so self-induction, one coil lang, no? same coil. But then sa mutual induction, there is another coil. So two coils ang mutual induction. So the formula of self-inductance is L times is equal to N multiplied by flux over electric current. And mutual induction, we have mu sub O times mu R. So where mu sub O is permeability of free space, mu R is relative permeability of the soft iron ore or iron core, and N is number of turns. A is area and L, I is the length of the conductor. L is the length of the conductor, that's the L. So we have this simple problem solving. Consider a wire loop of an area a is equal to 1 square cm. Initially, far from any sources of magnetic field. So a strong bar magnet with B equal to 1 Tesla near its poles is suddenly inserted into the loop. So filling the loop completely. So if the time required to insert the magnet is delta T equal to 0 0.1 S, so what is the approximate value of the EMF induced in the loop? So all you have to do is to uh, summarize what are the given quantities. Well, our given quantities are area 1 times 10 to negative 4 m squared. So we, we need to convert cm to m. So 1 cm squared is equivalent to 1 times 10 to negative 4 square meter. Another given is one Tesla. This is our magnetic field. And delta T or time change in time is 0 0.1 S. So next thing to answer the value of EMF induced is to recall the formula. So epsilon is equal to negative delta uh, flux, delta magnetic flux or change in flux divided by change in time. So we have to do is to substitute where flux, so we recall natin that flux, magnetic flux is equal to B times A or A times B. 
Recall lang ninyo yan, no? Na-discuss na ninyo natin, natin last time. So, A is area. That's why we have this one. And this is our B, or our magnetic field. And divided by time. So, use your calculator to extract the value of induced EMF. So, we have calculator there. Induced EMF, therefore, is negative 0 0.001 volt. So, in this situation, this is a short lived EMF. No? Because uh, a single battery, yung mga size D, is about 1.5 volt. So, kailangan pa ito i-develop to have that 1.5 volt like a battery. This is just a small EMF. So, dito tayo sa checking of understanding portion. The electromotive force. So, naka-fill in the blocks ito. So, I would like you to write your answer in a chat. No? Wala kayong selection part, pero pwede kayo maka-sulat uh, ng word dyan, no? So, one, electromotive force is expressed in terms of, so, ibig sabihin, ano ang, may, ano ang unit ng electromotive force? Yes, correct. Carnel Amor Castro. Okay. Correct. Okay. Ne What's this? Nesha? Sige. What about number two? The experimental link connecting electric and magnetic force was discovered by... Discovered by... So, this was discovered by Ersted. No? First na naglink ng electric and magnetic forces, Ersted. Hans Christian Ersted. Okay, three. The fact that an electric current is induced if the conductor in a changing magnetic field is known as? Ito na yung answer. Yung answer kanina. This is... Three is Faraday's law. Four, the term electromagnetic induction refers to the production of. Ano ang na-produce dito? Electromagnetic induction refers to the production of electric current. And five, a difference between self-induction and mutual induction is that a mutual induction requires two coils mutual requires two coils while self induction self induction requires only one coil so that's it okay another uh, checking of understanding voltage can be induced in a wire by a moving the wire mean the uh, wire Near, this is near a magnet. Changing the current in a nearby wire. Moving a magnet near a wire. 
So the answer is D, correct, on, no? Moving the wire near a magnet, changing the current in nearby wire, and moving a magnet near a wire. Lahat, huh? Very good. Next. A magnet can move in a coil of wire to produce electricity. In which system? It is in the... It's in the generator. Actually, itong topic na generator, madiscuss sana ito dun sa DC circuit, pero because of time, uh, our time is limited, no? Okay, so next... What would be, what would happen if I move the bar magnet in and out of a coil of copper wire? A, it would produce a gravitational field. B, electric current will flow through the wire. Magnet would explode. Electric current would disappear. So the answer is obvious. And no answer. Sagot na ba ito, Harnell, sa, sa question na ngayon? Okay. Okay. Correct. No? So, the answer is B. Electric current will flow through the wire. Wala naman tayo na-discuss about gravitational field. Wala din tayo na-discuss that the magnet would explode. Electric current would disappear. No? So, it's the, the answer is B. Okay, that's all for today. Our lesson summary, by the way. So, electromagnetic or magnetic induction is the production of an electromotive force across an electrical conductor in a changing magnetic field. Michael Faraday is generally credited with the discovery of induction in 1831. Faraday also formulated his law, which tells how to calculate the induced electric field in different situations. To use this law, we must first recall the quantity called magnetic flux. So as we have discussed last time, that magnetic flux is the product of area and magnetic field, provided that the perpendicular area, the, the line perpendicular to the area is uh, one that you're going to multiply the magnetic field. And the unit of magnetic flux is Weber. So again, pro provided that B is perpendicular to the surface area. And to compute for the induced electromotive force by Faraday's law, we are given epsilon or EMF is equal to negative change in phi or change in magnetic flux over change in time. And this direction is negative from the uh, law of lens. Pag maraming coils, no? as in a solenoid, then to compute for the EMF is the uh, product of N multiplied by delta phi over delta t, and the direction is negative. So factors that would affect voltage production are the number of coils and changing magnetic field. That's all for today. I would like to say thank you so much for attending this virtual class.